I've been in the SCPF genre since 2017, and since then I've had a mixed bag of experiences. I've met some of the best people I know, but I've also met genuine criminals who belong in prison. And although I've enjoyed some of my time in the community, over the last year it has been completely soured as I've come to realize the place I'm in is not exactly what I bargained for. I've held this sentiment since mid-2021, and since then I have halted any major development on Site Phoenix and I have personally distanced myself from the community at large, which I know has led to some confusion regarding my intentions, but ultimately I hope to provide at least some clarity with this video. But everything considered, this announcement and video is far overdue, and I probably shouldn't have hesitated as long as I did in going forward with creating it. But regardless of that, let me get into the primary reasons as to why I have made these decisions. On May 31st, 2021, my Department of External Affairs released a document written by me and my close friends to unveil activities which Daxrentha had been partaking in between 2019 to 2020. In short, Daxrentha created a Discord server which he named Dax's Thigh Cult, and in this server he would post images of his thighs and other provocative images to users present in the server, some of them being under the age of 13, while Dax himself was around 17 to 18 at the time. This all occurred while Dax Rentha was a developer for a group called Phoenix International. He would recruit people to his server by inviting members of PI, one of them being my close friend Nakam, alongside various other acquaintances I am familiar with, which is why I felt personally responsible for spearheading the creation of the document. After the release of the document, Dax Rentha made an announcement slash apology to his SCPF Discord which was then later deleted. And since then, Daxrentha has said to me privately and to the public that he has changed, and that he had actually taken my original criticism of his character and actions to heart. But covertly, Daxrentha instead made the decision to contact several other bad actors within the genre, with the hopes to get me to remove the document through other means. A week or two later, Daxrentha decided to have his intelligence agency director, Flammy, contact an individual named Ferd who is friends with a person who runs what is essentially a quasi-business centered around the DDoSing of Roblox games. Their service runs on a Discord server that anyone they deem fit can join, and once you are a member, you can pay to use their botnet to DDoS a Roblox game of your choosing. And to add some insight, this particular type of service is actually quite common, especially in the SCPF genre. Also, this is like a, a little bit off script, but Flammy contacted me and one of my friends on several different occasions to discuss the ongoing DDoSing situation. She would ramble about really bizarre things and boast about her proficiency in DDoSing and being the head of an intelligence agency. But uh, alongside that, she really loved to use voice calls to confront me instead of like directly messaging me on Discord because she had some strange false pretense that it would stop the conversation from being recorded or something. She also threatened Phoenix's imminent death if I were to dare record any of the voice calls, so of course we had to begin recording. Everything, everything said in this VC stays between us, okay? Like, I'm serious. Because if I, if I get an ounce, if I get an ounce that anything got leaked i will i will i will i will hit paid i will hit oraculus's group okay i'm i'm actually serious when i come to this you guys are about to be hit very hard okay you guys are about to get very hit very hard connections to the ddosing world and apparently i can turn you guys offline at any point like, yeah, it's true. I could do that. I'm the only person in Pathos right now who holds the power to ruin a group. I've done it before, right? I've done it to groups before. I understand that you're, you as a foundation are trying to improve. However, there's a lot of hate on Oraculus right now. There's a lot of hate on Nakam. Those two are one of the most heated topics in the community, both the intel and DDoSing community. I can make it end. I can guarantee you and I can tell you right now I can make it end. And I, I have full authority and power to basically put a blacklist on every single botnet out there. On you guys. Similar to what I did with Pathos. Without you needing to pay money or whatnot. Give me a call with Oraculus. 
I pray he gets in here. Because I really want to eat food. I, I'm really hungry. I could honestly go on for hours about Flammy. She really is just a specimen. But I'll provide an entire segment with an in-depth look at some of her other actions further on in the video. Now that we're off of that topic, the deal the two concocted was to have Ferd constantly render Sight Phoenix unplayable by spiking the ping repeatedly via repeated DDoS attacks until I removed the document regarding Dax Renta. This, of course, was unacceptable, and I did not fall through with my position on the subject. But in turn, my game, and my only source of income at the time, was rendered useless for weeks on end, and the servers hosting the game were constantly stricken with denial of service attacks. Me and my friends who were developing the game at the time all tried various remedies to the situation, such as a server browser or locking the game to group members only. We even tried emailing Roblox at one point, but all of our efforts failed to solve the problem. And eventually, we got to a point where the only sensible solution was to play the waiting game, in the hopes that the attackers would eventually grow bored and move on. Here is a gif of all of the accounts that we were banning with the server browser. These are all accounts that were associated with the botnet or other people who were flagged as suspicious and deemed unfit to enter the game. This was something we manually had to update for days on end. Waiting it out worked to some extent, but the most tragic part of this situation where legitimate loss occurred is what happened to Nakam. In an attempt to negotiate with Ferd, a deal was proposed where Nakam were given an assortment of his limited hats valued at approximately 700 USD to Ferd, and in exchange, Safe Phoenix will be put on their blacklist of games that cannot be DDoSed under their service. This worked only momentarily, and the DDoSing returned, and ultimately, the entire negotiation turned out to be purely about the extortion of my friend. Later on, in 2021, after the situation which we were speaking of had blown over, Ferd's DMs with Flammy got leaked, and this alarmed him. Promptly, he DM'd Nakam and demanded to know why his DMs were leaked, and he threatened Phoenix in the process. And since then, Ferd has went on to found his own foundation, and it is currently in development. But regardless of all that, with all this information I have gathered, I can say with conviction that Ferdinand is truly a piece of human garbage. Not only did he extort my friend, but he also abused his trust having known him for six years prior to the situation. As for Ferd, greed and the pursuit of power is paramount and nothing else takes priority. Later on during the situation, I was added to a group chat with Daxrentha and Nihiloxia regarding the foremost document about his sexual degeneracy. Dax talked about how he and his SCPF would get remarks or jokes made about him and his actions, and that he had been DDoSed like we have been before. He blamed all of this on the document and the exposure of his misconduct, not once in the conversation did he take his own accountability into his hands, instead blaming all of his problems on the fact that his actions have been made public for all to see. He believed that it would be better for it to be completely private as long as he himself isn't partaking in any of the activities that were on display in that document. Whether or not he did change though is another question, but we'll leave that for another day. From that point forward, the DDoSing continued sporadically before dying out altogether. Moving forward from this entire incident, I had gained some meaningful insight on the genre and the way Roblox operates. If one person has enough free time and enough mental instability, they can completely render a game useless by just joining the game, retrieving the server's IP address, and DDoSing it with any means they have available to them, and at any point in time as long as the server is still up and they have the address. This issue in particular wouldn't mean too much for larger games on the platform, but for a game in the SCPF genre, or any small Roblox game for that matter, that typically brings in only a few hundred players at a time, it is completely detrimental. Larger games have dozens of servers, while the smaller ones typically only have a handful, meaning that its entire player base can be sent offline within only a few minutes. This revelation in particular was one of the many things that caused me to turn away from my group. I don't want to be in a position where I'm vulnerable at all times to any old person who wants to extort me for money, or to wreck the servers of my game. And to add on to this fact, several points in time prior to the primary incident, and even after it, Phoenix had been DDoSed by several other individuals looking to get paid money for their efforts. This will always be an issue as long as Roblox decides it to be. They could fix it, but it would cost them money, something they don't seem to be too keen on doing. Early in 2022, news came out about the previous owner of Area Omega, Swift. He had sanctioned the creation of an intelligence division named Unknown. 
Very imaginative, I know. What this group did is, uh, well, reprehensible, to say the least. Some of the things they did were actually completely illegal. They carried out orders under SWIFT, and like the average SCPF intelligence department, their specialization was save instancing and leaking sites, exploiting, doxing, and DDoSing. One of their most heinous misdeeds is when they went after a 14-year-old girl and pinpointed her exact location, and proceeded to stalk and gather information about her. They were even possibly procuring nude photos from her as well. This incident in particular is probably just one of many perpetrated by them. The only reason I know of it is because of the document that was released describing it. And once the behavior went public, Swift promptly packed his bags and sold his SCPF. The activities of this group is a golden example of what most SCP intelligence groups do in the genre. Doxing and blackmailing people. Sometimes even posing as girls to get into relationships with members just to gather info and then to use it to blackmail them later. Intelligence departments are terrible. They breed a horrible environment and help to make the genre a worse place. I knew of this while making my SCPF and decided not to include an intelligence department in its creation for this very reason. Because not only is it childish, it's also stupid and oftentimes illegal. Dreg is the owner of a small SCPF. At the beginning of 2020, he purchased the site Area 19, originally created by Software, the owner of Black Site Zeta. Software owned this site previously and sold it to him so that he could use it for his SCPF. And since then, Dreg and his development team have been working on revamping the site for the better part of about two years. This is fine and all, but the issues come to surface when you look at Dreg himself. Dreg in the past has defended people who consume Lollyporn and Roblox Rule 34. He has gone on record claiming that the consumption of such material doesn't qualify as pedophilia because the imagery is fictional, and that there were no real children being victimized. Alongside this, he has constantly mismanaged his group and has sent portions of his quote-unquote very limited development budget to his sister, and at this point in time he was sending essentially the pay cuts of one of his developers to his sister so that she could purchase things such as game passes, and because of his indolence, his group has not yet released and it has been in and out of states of postponement. I know I covered Flammy briefly earlier on in the video, but there's a plethora of things I didn't get a chance to cover, and I think a dedicated segment would do her justice. Now, I'm aware this isn't something that occurred inside the SCPF genre, but it's still something I want to cover. Similar to Dax Rentha, Flammy was a high-ranking member of Phoenix International, and in PI, she would message a developer within the group named Park Developer, also known as Reptomine. The things she would DM him would be trivial. She would DM him and ask questions seemingly meaningless. Things like what the weather was like or how he was doing that day. At the time, Reb's mental health was in a bad place and she would attempt to quote unquote comfort him with her messages, which is incredibly strange considering Flammy at the time was 20 years old and Reb was only 15. Some of the DMs she would send him were not only peculiar, but some of them were outright manipulative in nature. This type of behavior and style of speech that Flammy would utilize is unscrupulous and unusual considering Reb's situation. A week after these images, Reb would go on to take his own life with a firearm. And just to clarify, do not get me wrong, I'm not saying the reason Reb killed himself is because of Flammy, although it's entirely possible she played a role in his worsening condition considering his fragile mental state at the time. Considering that Flemmy is a grown woman, the behavior and way she talks around people eons younger than her is just as horrifying as it is concerning. And considering the fact that she's in her 20s and is active in Roblox groups that are typically inhabited by primarily young people while exhibiting this behavior is really messed up. And to add a cherry on top, she was also an NSFW voice actor, something she randomly proclaimed to me while in the aforementioned VC about the DDoS thing in 2021. This was like for when the, first, the pedophilia claims actually first came out before I had a chance to debunk them. But, yeah. no, they were, I'm an NSFW voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> so. Flammy is one of the worst people I've had to deal with in the genre. She's disgusting, manipulative, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if she turned out to be a sociopath. I know I briefly covered the issue of DDoSing on the platform prior in the video, but I want to actually describe just how much of an issue it can be. 
To put this into perspective, about a year ago, a user named Joshi joined Phoenix and began to exploit. After being caught, he was permanently banned, of course, and then afterwards, he began to rejoin on alternate accounts and began to DDoS the server, causing the game to crash and the server to close. He did this repeatedly for days on end and offered me a deal. In order for the DDoSing to stop, I would have to unban his main account and allow him to begin exploiting again. This, of course, wouldn't cut it, and much like every other time Phoenix had been DDoSed, we would have to just wait it out. It eventually worked, and Joshi left us alone. But Joshi was a tenacious person. After several months had passed, he had returned and began to do it again. His reasoning this time was that he enjoyed viewing the reactions of members in the SCPF Discord being confused and complaining about the attacks he was unleashing on the servers. In order to combat the attacks, we group locked the game and halted any join requests to the group. This worked, but Joshi then began to DDoS the games of my acquaintances and several other games inside the genre while claiming the perpetrators were members of Site Phoenix. This, of course, framed us in a bad light, but we were able to clear up the confusion thankfully, but ultimately, Joshi had pissed off the wrong people, and someone, I'm not exactly sure who, ended up doxing him and told him to stop, or his information would be released to the public, and since then, he had stopped his antics. Joshi is probably one of the more severe cases of DDoSers I've had to deal with while my group was active, but there has been countless other instances where people have DDoSed Phoenix and requested me to pay them to stop. It became almost a bi-monthly occurrence because the advertisements I was running on the website were drawing them in, and eventually, the problem just became a fact of life, something I would have to deal with as long as the group was active. Lumps is probably one of the worst, if not the worst, person I have come in contact with while in the SCP genre. Lumps is a notorious pedophile and catfish. He has lured countless miners into giving him nude photographs of themselves across several communities, such as the BRM5 Discord, and he has been banned in countless communities as well, for reasons I will get into. Lumps joined my group near the launch of it in October of 2020. They joined the engineering and technical services and rose up the ranks. Lumps posed as a girl while in the department and claimed they were 14 years old, but this appearance was a facade he designed so that he could coerce minors into trusting him more easily. The images he would gather would be used for blackmail against the people he tricked and his own personal consumption. He would store them in his own personal collection, a collection that he openly boasted about in a Discord server as if it was something to be proud about. In November of 2020, an individual, which I will be keeping anonymous, approached me and provided me with the information I previously described, leading to Lumps' removal. This incident happened in my own group, and it provided me with a useful perspective. These types of people exist everywhere and in every community, especially the SCPF genre. Roblox groups and communities provide a prime environment for these types of people to thrive, and it's sickening. They could be lurking anywhere, doing the same things Lumps was doing, and I personally don't like the idea of providing such a space where these sorts of things can happen. I've seen it with my own eyes. Now with all that being said, there's no other individual or subject I wish to share my insight on. I could drag this out for ages, but I think that would be redundant. Personally, I am done with this genre and Roblox groups altogether. I was 15 when I made Phoenix with my friends, and I enjoyed developing every bit of it with them. And even though I would like to continue working on the game, the genre that it sits in is one I no longer wish to be a part of. And with all my experience, this genre in its entirety has reached a state of stagnation across the board. Almost every developer or leader will tell you that they'll innovate the genre and breathe new life into it. But this, as a concept, is intrinsically flawed. I've seen it firsthand, people espousing such ideals. Even I was saying such things at one point. But quality and features within a site can only go so far. Sure, anyone can introduce new features or concepts as I did myself, but this is where groups and their internal structures come into play. People join SCPFs, or other groups for that matter, and work their way up the ranks. Then, the higher ranking members within the group task them with upkeep, whether it be updating spreadsheets, writing documents or guidelines, or keeping lower ranking members in check, and so on. They do all of this all while receiving zero pay, also that the owner of the group can profit off the game the members are essentially single-handedly keeping running. Even O5 members typically receive no payment. Even I am guilty of this, which I recognize and I am sorry for. 
And don't get me wrong, I'm aware a small minority of groups pay high ranks, but this typically is not the standard. Most high-ranking members are expected to be content with being paid in the excess of power they have access to, and to be content with going absolutely nowhere with the dead-end position they are in. It's up to you if this is upsetting, but for me personally, it feels scummy and selfish exploiting people this way. And oftentimes, I think if people truly wanted to innovate or to make a fresh experience for everyone, they should ditch this structure of groups and structure a game around itself instead. Growing a group is interesting and all, but the environment it breeds is horrible, and it almost always leads to corruption and toxicity, or predatory behavior, all leading to benefit usually its highest members and owners. But I digress. I hope my telling of some of the topics in this video provided at least some sort of insight from my perspective and situation. Furthermore, I would like to express my genuine gratitude for my friends and followers. I owe it all to you. As for me, I'll be working on projects and games on the platform outside of Roblox groups and SCP, and I will be leaving the genre permanently. I encourage anyone with a sound state of judgment to follow suit. Thank you.